Welcome back to the last full example video from Chapter H. We have a two-dimensional collision, which means we want to start right away knowing that we're going to be labeling all this different information so that we can keep it uh, organized for ourselves. All the things we might know or need to know about M1 and all the things we might know or need to know about mass 2. It's the same list as before, although it looks like a lot, it's just a way for us to really keep everything nice and organized so that we understand what's going on and where to plug in our numbers when we get to equations. All right, so the first mass that I saw here was the five kilogram block, so we'll go with that. It is moving directly to the right, which means all of that five meters per second is sideways at the beginning, and none of it is um, up and down. For the four kilogram block, that's the other block, we have a triangle here, so we can create the rest of that triangle. There's gonna be a piece that points straight down, and based on where this angle is, this is the opposite side, so this is eight, sine 60 degrees. Then there's going to be a piece that points to the left to finish this triangle in the appropriate vector kind of way. And this will be eight cosine 60 degrees. So at the beginning of the problem, we have these two pieces of information. The eight cosine 60 degrees is the X component. It's 4.0 meters per second, but it's pointing to the left, so we're going to, we have to call it minus because we've already decided that the, um, to the right direction is positive. And the y component, 8 sine 60 degrees, is 6.93 meters per second, and it's pointing downwards, which is our kind of standard default negative direction. Now, the key thing here is because these things stick together, that means that there's going to be a final x and a final y part of the velocity that is the same as each other. So both of these are the same. We don't know what they are. But both of these are the same, and we don't know what they are. Those come from the equations, and we can call them v final x and v final y. All right, so let's write down the equation. Again, every step of setup that we do is important and necessary to train our brain to be thinking about this critically and to be using problem-solving skills. We never want to skip steps because we're cutting corners or because we're rushing because that doesn't mean or that means that we aren't preparing ourselves for test time properly. Five times positive five plus four times negative 4 is equal to 5 v final x plus 4 v final x. So we have 25 minus 16 is equal to 9 v final x. We divide both sides by 9. We have 9 divided by 9, which is 1.0 meters per second that came out positive. We need to keep that in mind. That is important for us. And that is the x component of our final velocity. Again, no complex algebra, just adding things, subtracting things, dividing. But we need to make sure that we're keeping track of everything because that's what makes these problems difficult is if we are not keeping track of things. All right, we write out the equation in the y direction. Again, all of these subscripts have meaning, so we want to make sure we're keeping track of everything properly. 5 times 0 plus 4 times negative 6.93 is equal to 5v final y plus 4v final y. On the left we have negative 27 Point seven equals 9v final y on the right. We divide both sides by 9. We're going to get negative 3.1 meters per second is equal to v final y. 
And then just like before, these two pieces are part of a final triangle. So 1.0 positive was to the right here. 3.1 negative was down. And then what we're doing to finish the problem is we're calculating the overall speed, so the size of the velocity, which is going to be using Pythagorean theorem, and the angle relative to the horizontal, and that's going to be using trigonometry. So we have that 1.0 squared plus 3.1 squared is equal to v squared. Although we have a negative sign up here, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagoras does not care about plus or minus, it's just a triangle to him. And so we don't need to include the negative sign, and even if we do, it's within parentheses and would cancel out. So it is safer to not include it when we are just dealing with, um, when we are just dealing with triangle ideas. So we'll take the square root of both sides separately. So we get an overall speed of 3.3 meters per second, just having the same rounding that I've had up until now. So that's the amount of velocity, the size. And then if we look at where the angle is, the tangent of the angle is the opposite, 3.1, over the adjacent, 1.0. So the angle is going to be the arc tangent of that, which is going to be 72 degrees. We do not need to specify south of east here. We just need to have the drawing. So the drawing plus the angle plus the amount is the final answer to this situation, just like before. If we look back at it, the majority of the effort should be in the setup, and then we can just follow through that setup to the final answer at the end. That's it for the official examples from chapter 8. Please make sure you're thinking about what kinds of collision problems we've had and think about which ones you found most difficult to understand so that you can practice more of those, ask questions about them, all of the strategies that we're trying to build in this class for problem solving. So I will see you in the next uh, lecture video.